85% of the Atacama Desert is here in Argentina. So, this is where we are headed, in search of adventure and solitude. We've got a full tank of diesel. We topped up our food and water reserves. We are ready for part two of our expedition to the Atacama. In this episode, we camp on the shore of the Laguna Carachipampa. The next day, we drive to the unusual Campo de Piedra Pomes, the Pumice Field, and then on to ascend the White Volcano. All this and more in this episode. On the way here, we stopped in the small town of Londres, which in Spanish means London. We visited the Inca archaeological site called El Xincal. This site was discovered about 30 years ago. There used to be about 300 people living on the site and maintaining it. It was the southern capital of the Incas between um, Machu Picchu in Cusco, Peru and Mendoza. When the dignitaries used to visit, they celebrated here the um, sun and moon ceremonies. So there are two raised terraces. Uh, you can see the stairs leading up to one of them here. In the Argentine countryside, there are still many people who live the same way as they used to a few hundred years ago. Our destination now is the hamlet of El Peñon. We'll be driving the famous Ruta 40, uh, Route 40, which is mostly uh, paved to uh, El Peñon. Uh, there's a 30 kilometer section that is not paved and is uh, fairly rough.
driving on that mixture of uh, sand and uh, lava rock. The volcano is just uh, left of us. So we're driving on the volcanic flow. And we should be at the Laguna fairly soon. Two kilometers from your destination. This is the kind of scene every photographer dreams of. A beautiful landscape, the soft evening light, and wildlife reflecting in calm water. But it is just daily life. Birds feeding in order to survive another cold night in a hostile environment. Why can't we see the beauty in our own existence? The beauty of being alive today, now on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Last night around 9 o'clock we moved the truck behind this uh, row of uh, thin trees that gave us some protection from the wind but uh, maybe an hour later suddenly the wind just died down and uh, it's been very quiet, very peaceful since then so we were very uh, fortunate and thankful to have a hard shell around us to protect us because uh, it would have been very difficult to set up a tent or a, a rooftop tent but uh, inside the shell we were nicely protected and um, we could uh, be seated we could read we shared a glass of wine and a few mixed nuts and then later in the evening Katy boiled water and uh, made a light soup. So we were nice and cozy and uh, actually it isn't cold, we're at 10,000 feet but uh, 
it was nine degrees celsius in the truck this morning so quite pleasant and uh, right now the sun uh, came out uh, a few minutes ago and uh, it's really nice so we're looking forward for uh, to this uh, new day and uh, new adventure Special is that. So yesterday at some point we had difficulty uh, finding the trail, the main track that we followed uh, from the pavement uh, was the right one for a while and then took us uh, more and more uh, off course. So we ended up uh, picking up a faint uh, tire track across the desert and following it and um, eventually we uh, ended up back on the road I had, well the track I had marked on the Gaia GPS. Uh, the plan for today was to turn around, uh, do the whole loop again, uh, not to the pavement, but to the main track, uh, basically around the volcano. But uh, the track we came on continues and uh, there was a pickup truck, a local adventure truck that uh, drove by light last night coming from uh, that direction and uh, there's also some big trucks from uh, probably mining company camped uh, further so I'm thinking the track probably continues and connects with the main track to uh, Campo Piedra Pomes so I'll uh, reprogram the GPS this morning and uh, we'll give that a try
Nevsko can pull Kieden and Paul Nes behind a while ago. The track has become a bit rough here. And we passed 4,000 meters of uh, elevation. But we seem to be on track. We just caught up with a couple of trucks we saw earlier at the Campo Piedra Pomes. I chatted with them. For a while they are going um, the same route we're going, so... Not alone, at least for now. Front is a Ford Ranger Raptor, and uh, just in front of us is a Toyota. The trucks to go a different direction. They're heading to some uh, hot springs uh, close by. We're heading to the white volcano. The landscape is quite amazing here. Tell you which one is the white volcano, I don't know. White volcano is uh, the cause of the Campo Piedra Pomes. The Campo Piedra Pomes, the Cumis field, is uh, the result of uh, eruptions from this volcano. hasn't been too bad but we're climbing in altitude and it's a little soft and uh, I'm climbing in uh, fourth gear low range four wheel drive of course and he says we're at 4,400 meters Taking that huge sand dune in front of us and the patterns in the sand.
we have reached uh, Laguna Puruja. You can see it behind me. From the sign, uh, it's a few more kilometers of a rough trail to get here, but uh, we have a flat spot, so we are gonna have lunch here and then um, continue. But it was quite an experience getting here. It was rough driving, uh, difficult navigation, and uh, just a bit of a threatening landscape not knowing if uh, the trail would uh, get us here as shown on the maps or not, because um, the maps in the GPSs are not always that accurate. They don't always match the tracks through the desert. And some of them are really uh, faint and difficult to see because uh, there's very little traffic in that section of the park and uh, the tracks are uh, swept by the wind as well so they disappear but anyways we're here and uh, glad to be here After our late lunch at the Laguna Puruja, we retraced our steps back to the intersection and then started the three-hour drive to uh, the small uh, rural town of Antofagasta de la Sierra. Even though we were at a lower altitude following a wide valley, it was still challenging because uh, this is a route that is not very well used. So at some sections, the track was fairly flat and smooth and we could drive at fairly high speed. And then it would disappear suddenly. And for half a kilometer, we had to pick our way through the desert until we could find the track again. But anyways, uh, everything went well and uh, I'm very pleased with the truck. It performed uh, flawlessly even though uh, we pushed it to its limits. Very high altitude climbs in uh, soft uh, ground, hard terrain and all sorts of things. But uh, everything went well. The tires, I'm super happy. They uh, performed well at, as well. The route planning turned out to be accurate, our navigation as well, we didn't get lost. So our adventure continues. After a night in the small town of Antofagasta, tomorrow we'll be driving up the volcano Galan and then down into its crater to the Laguna Diamante. So stay tuned for the next episode of the Atacama Argentina Expedition. Mm -hmm.